Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples back with 5-Minute Sociology. Today we're going to do a big one, structural functionalism. First off, we're going to talk about what this idea is. Second, I'm going to give you an example of it in action. And finally, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about why it's important. We've got a lot to do today. Let's get started. Structural functionalism is, at its core, a very simple idea. All the parts of society work together to create a stable whole. You know, notice the word structural is in this phrase, structural functionalism. Well, that's actually what we're looking at here, is the structure of how our society will function. Moreover, if there's a problem happening in society, such as a social problem, we'll see that the entire society can over time adapt or evolve to address that and still keep its stability. This means that a society can take a real shock to the system and still be sustainable. Structural functionalism originates with Emile Durkheim, who's also our first sociologist. Durkheim looked at the idea of social structure. He wanted to understand what exactly keeps our society together and functioning. And this is where we come up with the idea that all these parts of society, ranging from social institutions to groups to culture and even you, all work together to keep the whole thing running. In fact, he also explored the idea of solidarity. He wanted to understand what exactly made people feel cohesive and together in part of a society. He talked about mechanical solidarity and organic solidarity. With mechanic solidarity, he was thinking about this idea of how small groups, such as a farming village, have shared interests that overlap and they can work together. But as we start to see things like urbanization happening, which Durkheim probably would have been thinking about places like Paris, for example, he was thinking about organic solidarity. There, he realized that people had, you know, different interests and different causes and different things that they were involved in. And yet we were still able to find solidarity in how our society linked together. Now, in the United States, two other sociologists would later take these ideas and adapt them. That's Talcott Parsons and Robert Merton, both still interested in the idea of what makes our society stable. In fact, their work would lead to something called systems theory, which was basically a study of the idea of social organization, an entire field dedicated to this core idea of, well, structural functionalism. Structural functionalism is also one of the three sociological perspectives alongside conflict and symbolic interaction. And it's, again, a way of looking at our society, trying to understand and think about how it functions and how it continues from day to day. So as a very personal example of structural functionalism in action, I want to go back to September 11th, 2001. What kept American society stable even after this huge, huge blow to its cultural identity, its stability, and more? Social institutions are a great example because in many cases, different social institutions stepped up to create a sense of solidarity even as the rest of our society was in confusion. I think churches are the easiest example. In my community, I saw churches of all different kinds open their doors to everyone and encourage people to come come inside regardless of their faith, regardless of their beliefs, to come inside, to feel part of our society, to feel part of one sense of confusion of not knowing what was going on, but that we could come together and still be a stable society. I think that was a really effective example of structural functionalism. In fact, sometimes structural functionalism is compared to a living organism where, you know, the whole thing works together. The hearts and lungs moves air and blood throughout the system, you know, while all the other parts like your kidneys are filtering out waste and so forth. Our society should be able to function even if one part gets briefly injured and it should be able to adapt and evolve over time. Structural functionalism is important because it's really at the core of why sociology exists. It's all about understanding how is our society constructed over time, how does it change over time, and what keeps our society stable over time. Structural functionalism addresses all of these issues. Moreover, structural functionalism gives us a way to approach the idea of social change and understand how in times of crisis our society can move on, whether that's a revolution, the September 11th strikes, COVID-19, whatever may come, our society should technically remain stable as long as those pieces are interacting and they're able to keep themselves together. All right, that's structural functionalism in five minutes or less. If there's a topic that you'd like me to cover in this series, leave it in the comments below. I'll see you next time.